I, I'm very happy to note that um, during the survey earlier, Asia is very important to most of you. So I'm sure because A Asia is very important to most of you, you are all very familiar with the constantly changing headlines in Asia. I'd like to, I'd like to focus on two of them. Um, I'd like to focus on these two with the five minutes given to me because um, these are interconnected and worth expounding on in the sense that uh, number one, they threaten to create instability. Um, and this creation of instability uh, could greatly impact other, other regions. And number two, um, they most represent um, geopolitical undercurrents that I am sure um, this same geopolitical undercurrents are also present in your region. The first of that is the rising tide of illiberalism in Asia. Um, almost always, this rising tide of illiberalism is guided by um, online disinformation and influence operations. And this rising tide of, of illiberalism across Asia, we see that there are many regimes now that are gravitating towards authoritarianism. And this gravi gravitation to authoritarianism uh, we see regimes spurning a rights-based order. We see regimes that um, now favor a more polarized society. Uh, we see regimes that are capitalizing on the frustrations of the people. And the effect of a very polarized society is that uh, the, the common ground for di discourse has been receding already. And this brings us to the second one that is worth um, expounding on. And that second one is expansionism. And expansionism, um, the, the rising tide of illiberalism dovetails to expansionism in the sense that we see that when the public has been silenced or when the public has been co-opted or um, when the discourse has receded and along with it the pressure of scrutiny, regimes can sometimes become emboldened to assert their idea of order outwards beyond their national boundaries. Uh, we see it now um, in the South China Sea dispute. We see it now in the Russia-Ukraine war. Uh, and we expect to see it in many other um, places all over the world if we are not able to stop um, what we are seeing now in Asia. But I would like to end my five minutes with a bit of hope. I am still very hopeful. I am still very hopeful that the technology that has been used to spew lies, uh, that, has been, um, that has been used to spew hatred, we can also use that to bring hope we can also use that to bring um, unity. We have seen a lot of many encouraging um, situations all over the world. We see Iran. Uh, we see the Philippines. We saw in the Philippines during the last elections. The technology has also been used by the people to unite, um, to, to fight for democracy. And there is momentum. Um, we, we see hope that there is a lot of reason for us to sustain that momentum. So I end this five minutes, minutes with inviting you to the next 15 minutes that will be given to me later on during the day to talk more about the state of democracy in Asia. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lenny Robredo, for um, this short overview. And as Lenny has mentioned, of course, we'll hear more from her on uh, the effect that this information has on democracy in Asia and worldwide later in today.